These are Type E3 diesel fuel injectors. You'll find them on pretty much all of the 11, 13, and 16 liter Mack Volvo platforms. Today we're going to take a look at how to inspect them. Welcome back to Ratchet and Frank TV. Right off the bat, I want to point out that we pulled stainless steel cups out of our head. This isn't always the case. More often than not, especially on older engines, you're going to find brass or copper cups, which are non-conicals or flathead injector cups. People refer to them as brass cups, copper cups, flathead cups, whatever you want. Just know that they are not conical cups and they're not stainless cups. They get removed entirely different too. You'll actually thread the tip and then pull the entire cup out with the threads you made with a special tool. These are the newer style cups, the stainless steel ones that get used with conical injectors. Conical injectors get their name from the appearance of their spraying section. While still relevant, and incredibly capable, the unit injector is entering the end of its days. More often than not, you will see it being replaced by common rail technology. Take a look at the tapered section on the tip of this injector. You can see a thin silver band. Notice how the silver band completely contains all of the carbon deposits on the tip of the injector. Now take a look at this injector. I pulled these out of a truck that was having some issues making power. You can see the tapered section on the tip of the injector is completely pitted. It also looks to be shiny. The lack of a sealing band or that silver band on the tapered section of the injector indicates to us that this injector has been sliding up and down in the cup. This is also why if you take a look at the tapered section the injector it has a slightly more rounded appearance than the ones that we pulled out of our engine. Injectors that look like this would allow combustion gases to leak up inside of the cup and directly aerate the fuel system which in turn would cause poor performance absolutely. While this would totally be considered general and broad wear, around 300,000 miles I'd expect to get out of a set of injectors before they look like this, fuel in the cooling system would not be indicative of injectors that have failed in this manner. Instead that is probably an injector cup o-ring that has failed that is allowing fuel and cooling to mix. Now when we jump back over to the injectors we pulled out of our engine, you can see that these have a much more distinctive ring between that combustion gas area and the non-contact area on the injector. This is a perfect example of an injector that's reusable, and if I'm being completely honest, I think these injectors were recently replaced. A few rules of thumb if you're planning on doing your own injectors. We do not mix conical and non-conical injectors. If you've determined an injector is reusable, you can totally replace it with the same cup it came out of inside of the same bore. It is perfectly acceptable to do so. However, with that being said, I would always advise to replace your injectors in sets of six, and if you are planning on reusing the injector, totally change the cup. If you look down the injector bore, you could see the cup seat with clear view. You could also see the water jacket surrounding it. Towards the top of the bore, you can see a thin channel that runs parallel with the valve train. This is the internal fuel rail that provides the injector with fuel during the filling phase. The upper plug is meant to provide access should you want to test the mechanical pressure of the internal fuel rail. The lower port is the core plug for the cooling jackets. The injector will quite literally stay suspended in that jacket held in place inside of the injector sleeve, and that's what allows the injector to cool while it's operating. From the upper O-ring to the lower cup seal, the entire cup is surrounded by water during engine operation. That gives you an idea of just how big those cooling jackets are. If you take a look at the injector, you can see there's a lower groove there that looks like it's missing an O-ring. That's because it is, and you'll only ever find something there on an MP10, and in that case, you'll find a V-ring there. If you're interested in learning how to remove your own injectors, why don't you check out this video here. If you're interested in seeing more general content like this, you could check out this video over here. Or if you just want to see me make more videos, press this one over here. I have an actual ton of footage that I'm going to be delivering to you guys over the next couple weeks. Thank you so much for watching. I very much hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time on Ratchet and Frank TV.